thank you for coming. Oh, more coming in. I'm going to start off by handing you some uh, sheets of paper. So I'd like you maybe, oops, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you. Could you maybe help me out, just hand them, in case you don't have a pen. Um, and here's one for you. And I would like you to work in groups, so maybe you two per row, one sheet per row, please. So maybe gather together and you have some sheets are colorful, some are not. I'm sorry, they're not, no, um, no big reason for that. I know, but you work in a group. This one for you. This one for you. Are you okay working in a group with them? This one for you. It's for you too. So this is for your group. Maybe you can all work all four together. This one for your group. Maybe you two can, or you two. And would you two like to work together? So there's one for you group for one row. So. So this one, okay. So. More people coming. Please just join rows. You work in groups in a row. So join any row where there's still space. Hello. People still coming in. Just find the space in a row, please, where you find an empty space. There, there's some, there are two uh, chairs here, two more over there. There's a chair here as well. Right, so everybody's in. Um, you have one per row. So one more time, if every row has got one sheet of paper. I'm sh I, I hope Jose passed Sharpie so that each row Sharpie. has at least one. You. If you don't have, there's more here. Never say no to Sharpie. <laughs> so you can see there are some words on this sheet of paper. There's some from Agile vocabulary. What I would like you to do while I'm talking, I'd like you to, if you hear a word that is on your sheet, please mark it in any way you like. You can draw something, you can color, use colors or whatever you want. Now, once you have marked all six words, you can interrupt me and wave your sheet of paper in the air like that and shout. Bingo! That's right. Because we're going to play a bingo game. The rules are the same, just like regular bingo. So the whole row will... <laughs> if the row wins, there are some chocolates from Germany here that you, the row can have with us too. I know. I want you to win. So every sheet has different words. Every sheet has different words, so there may be more than one winner, right? Mm -hmm. So, there's more than one chocolate here. <laughs> right. So, in this scenario, I am your trainer and you're my learner group. And I would like to demonstrate to you what a brain-friendly learning and training method is. <laughs> And to do that, I'm going to use some statements on the slides. And I'm going to ask you to use your thumbs up or down. If you think the statement is correct, please show me the thumbs up. If you think the statement is wrong, thumbs down. So one more time, <laughs> no option. I'm going to show you statements and what do you need to do? Well done, great, this is working really good, okay. <laughs> so the first one, movement distracts learners from focusing on the content. Oh, oh we have so, up, 
all down. That's right. So it's the actual opposite. When you move, the oxygen gets more brain. The brain gets more oxygen. <laughs> I, was just, I was just saying if you're paying attention. And that enhances the learning and uh, the memory. Okay. The best way to learn something is to teach it. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. Oh, we have a thumb down. Let's see. So indeed, when you teach something, you repeat it, and that's a chance kind of for, your, for the knowledge to stick really in your brain. The brain stores words for a longer time than it does images and sounds. <laughs> I think you have strong opinions on that. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly opposite. The brain stores images and sounds a lot longer. That's why you, if you prepare training, should use more images and sounds in them for the learners, for the learners' knowledge to basically stick. Longer segments of instruction are more effective than shorter ones. Everybody knows this one. So right, it's again the opposite. Make it short, your instructions, then have a break or do something different. Just chop it up so it's not in one long piece um, when you're preparing your trainings. Thumbs up, thumbs down is one way to make slides interactive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wonderful. OK, now I need my phone. because I need a timer. So now I'm going to give you 10 seconds, and I'm going to ask you to please stand up and tell me everything that you remember, or anything that you remember from what you've just learned <laughs> from those slides. So I'd like you to stand up, say it. No, 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 stay sitting. I'm, <laughs> you, I, I'm still just. <laughs> So when I say go, I would like you to stand up, say it at least one, two words, or a whole sentence, whatever you remember, and then sit back down, please. OK. Is it all of us at the same time, Jose? I don't know. No. Just one person at a time. <laughs> Dragon is ready. Always <laughs> ready. OK, so to repeat it, are you all standing up at the same time? How many seconds do you have to do this? Ten. And what are you going to be repeating? Anything. <laughs> well done. Okay. Your start, start, time starts now. Come on, Dragan. I forgot to go. Using thumbs up or thumbs down is an attack. Brilliant. Hello. <laughs> teaching helps uh, learning. Wonderful. Moving around while teaching brings more oxygen to the brain, not the other way. Perfect. Shorter is better than longer. <laughs> That's you. Well Any more? Movement video and sound. <laughs> Thank you. Um, movement can help the learning. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I think the time's up. But give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you for indulging me in this exercise. It's basically to demonstrate. <clears throat> Training from the back of the room, or as I called it here in brain-friendly training method for training and learning. And I was lucky enough to have attended this trainer certification course <laughs> by Actineo with marvelous JP sitting there in the corner and Jose Calas here. And um, today in this talk, I'm trying to, I'm claiming that this brain-friendly training methodology is definitely going to help when we do agile transformations. I'm going to correct myself here. I use the word transformations, but today I heard so many times, especially from Helen, <laughs> it's release, releasing agility. releasing agility, exactly. So it will help when we release agility in uh, companies. 
Right. So I'm going to shortly describe to you, I demonstrated how it looks like, so I'm going to shortly describe um, how this training method kind of is built, is structured. There are four steps. Uh, first step when you are building or using this brain-friendly methodology is to establish connections among your learners. So when the learners feel connected to each other, when there is a psychological safety, then they are more um, inclined to be kind of talking to each other, sharing and then learning from each other. So in our exercise, what do you think was our connection activity when I started the talk? What did I do first? And what did I ask you to do? Exactly, to get you to connect, to talk, so that you can then work together. Then the second step would be concepts or the content delivery. So I as a trainer, I want to give, deliver some content. <clears throat> and the, the best way, this training method says, the best way to do it is to use as many senses as you possibly can. So have your learners read it, write it, draw it, see it, hear it, repeat it, etc. So one, it can be one content, but if they repeat it five times in different ways, this knowledge will really stick, like in the long-term memory. What was the example of my content delivery in this talk? Mm, before that, when I was... Exactly, thumbs up, thumbs down. That was where I was delivering, teaching you something. Then the third step is concrete practice. This is where you put the theory literally into practice. <clears throat> because when you do that, then you really get the learners to use the knowledge that they have just learned. In our example, what was the concrete practice that you did? The 10 seconds. Exactly, the 10 seconds. Yes, you were standing up, you were using your body, so it was not just saying it, but you were also moving, getting that oxygen in. And the last one is conclusions. So in conclusion, you would do something like evaluate the training that you've just had and also commit to something that you really liked that you may want to use in your life or work later. So in these conclusions, it's like a little yeah, review of what, what have we done, what was good, what, what could we improve on. And this what was good and what we could improve of, do you see any parallel with anything in agile world, perhaps in a meeting, scrum meeting? <laughs> <laughs> well, you say it. Retrospective. Retrospective, yeah. that's right. <laughs> I see you're watching your bingo sheets. So now watch your bingo sheets. This is your opportunity. So these words are kind of connected to this brain-friendly um, training method. Oh, okay, a round of applause. Here, please, help yourselves. Oh, can I have a helper, maybe? Thank you. Thank you, Hussain. So, these words, as I said, they are connections among learners. So then there, are, there is a collaboration, like you were collaborating together. There's, you were organizing yourselves alone. There's a transparency, taking responsibility. In this training, it means um, you get your learners, but everybody has to be responsible that they really learn. So it can't be you sitting in a group of four and only one person is teaching it. Yay! Thank you. Well done. So these words are brain-friendly training method kind of words that you use. But what other framework do you know that uses these words? It's not a biggie. <laughs> That's right, it's agile methodology. So what is the connection between the training method and agile methodology or agile transformations? I say the transformations need trainings in agile mindset because we know that implementing Agile in an organization is about 20% of the effort 
and the 80% of the effort is change mindset. So have people really uh, understand and believe in and also live the actual agile frame practices. Brain-friendly training method encourages this agile mindset because we're already getting people to sit together, connect, collaborate, do the teamwork. So why not connect this agile training method to the agile transformations? Or releasing agility, thank you. I'm going to change my slides after this. <laughs> so we can use the, the activities and tools, the interactive activities and tools that this method is offering uh, for agile mindset training, but we can also use them in other activities that you, like requirement workshops. <laughs> well done. Oh, you're really paying attention. Uh, so when we go to a customer and uh, where we're trying to find out what is it, how do they work right now, what is good, what do they want to change or op optimize, etc. We could use some of these interactive methods so it's not dry, so the customer is also kind of a little bit more relaxed and maybe also more inclined to listen and some kind of basis, prepare basis for agile, releasing agility. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a work in progress again. Uh, we can use it for trainings on how to use different software and hardware tools. So again, whatever, if I go and I have to teach them how to use Atlassian products, how to use Jira, Confluence, you could definitely use some of these interactive methods for that. For scrum meetings in dailies, in retrospectives, if you have a daily, if you make a daily when you ask everybody to stand on one foot and tell you what they did yesterday, what they're going to do today, and if there are any problems, you're going to keep your dailies really short. <laughs> they're not going to go like half an hour, 45 minutes. Or retrospectives. You could ask your team to draw a sprint, how they feel about the sprint. And I think that would you know, be more interactive, it would be more fun, and that would also kind of relax and make, make them the psychological safe, safety will be established <clears throat> through that. <coughs> Excuse me, through that. <coughs> or in presentations, such as this one, or in any kind of reports that you need to write. You can make put of lots of images in there, for example, um, thumbs up, thumbs down, stuff like that. I work for Boris Gloga Consulting, um, in and yeah, a different com like a consultant in different companies um, where they are trying to release their agility. And um, there are different kinds of industry, as you see, the agile virus has spread. So it's not only software development now, but we're going into schools and. Bingo! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> And what we do at different industries, we, we teach them, of course, the Agile framework, lots of different things, but we also train them in uh, Scrum roles. I'm taking Scrum roles as an example. So product owner, and what are the other two Scrum? <laughs> what was it? Yes, well done. There's a lot of bingo going on. Ah. Well done. He's not, he's not fast enough. Jose, speed up the game. Okay. So. So I've taken uh, Scrum roles just as an example, as I said. So if I take... Uh, school, for example, and when we go into school and we want to train the teacher and the classroom on how to implement Scrum, what role would our teacher take, do you think? The teacher is somebody who's going to take the see, look at the curriculum and maybe decide to prioritize the things that the children have to learn. Product owner, well done. And the classroom would be? The team. the team. Great. And then somebody from that team would be appointed a scrum master 
and that row would rotate so that, and then they would have little iterations. They would pick from their curriculum backlog things that they want to learn in the next sprint, which is maybe a long, maybe it's three month sprint. And then they would have little reviews on, it's like a grading, a review. And of course, they would have retrospectives where they would think what was in, inspect and adapt, basically. Or Scrum. <laughs> I didn't say it yet. I didn't say it. Scrum in hospital. <laughs> so another example is in hospitals. This is an operating theater. Uh, there was um, an example of an orthopedic hospital that wanted um, the workflow of a patient coming in, being operated on, having all this uh, technology switched on properly. Uh, and when it's done, he's wheeled out and then somebody has to clean everything. So this whole workflow of coming in and going out and being ready for a next patient, that they wanted to optimize, for example. So we would be training or taking one, that department of the hospital as a pilot and then a head surgeon would take the role of product owner. Oh, no. mm -hmm. That's right. A nurse in charge would then be scrum master. And the medical staff, the team, exactly. So not only medical staff, but there would be anesthesiologists, the cleaning uh, team. And so they would all, you know, the, the surgeon, the chief surgeon would say, okay, I would prioritize these, these things that need to be done. The scrum master would be making sure that, you know, her team doesn't have any problems in the way of their work. And the medical staff, everybody would be on the same hierarchy, you know, so cleaning team and the, and the nurses, they, there's no any more looking up or down, but they would all be working kind of hand in hand. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to say is wherever you want to implement Agile, you need to train the Agile mindset to take on the Scrum roles. And then I would use Agile trainings, such as brain-friendly training method, to implement these Agile mindsets. Bless you and thank you. <laughs>
what's that here? They were like 10th graders, so quite older kids. Um, they liked the, the autonomy of it. And that's, you know, the winning, uh, I mean, that's already the ace in the, that you can kind of use because if they decide what they want to learn, they are more motivated to learn it. And that was really, that, that was one bit where they just, really, we can choose from this curriculum? And we say yes. And that just went on from there, yeah. And self-organizing, that was also kind of a big hit, that they, they had the power to, not the teacher was saying how you should now go into groups, but they decided who should be in their groups, in like teams. That was, yeah. Yeah. Do you have um, <coughs> end of cycle exams, like in France, like some kind of baccalaureate? Because at some point, you, they are not negotiable to the curriculum. How did they address that? Um, they, I think in the school, where I had a, where I participated, I think they're doing just this year now the A levels or Abitur in Germany. I, I live in Germany, and I think they're doing it still now in the old system, because they haven't really, it hasn't been. There was not enough time to develop like a new or an agile way of, you know, how to how to implement now the really important grades that's going to take you know to university. So that's still. Sorry, I can tell you maybe in a couple of months of how they're planning to do it yeah. or next year how it went yeah Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> well what is it i'm really confused and so, um, a long time ago i was a that primary and secondary school teacher a lot of that the, the brain friendly stuff resonated with stuff that was about mm -hmm. I get a sense, and maybe it's some, just some of the people I work with, that that works with kids because there's a naivety there. They, they always don't know that someone's doing that to them. I have a real skepticism amongst the people that I work with. If I tried some of those techniques, they would switch straight off. Yeah. Is, there a, is there a, do you have an approach? What, what, do, do, do yeah. you that? Do you just make it clear that this is... You know what, it's like anywhere else, like it's in software development, it's the same thing. I have experience with that as well. Some people are very closed off and they just want to keep on doing their work the way they used to and they've been doing for years. And if you introduce anything new, it's like first, why? No, I don't, you know. So I think it's this creating psychological safety and maybe um, giving them examples of how things, successful things, how they worked and also making yourself vulnerable and saying, you know, look, we are not saying this is going to work and we're not going to say this is going to be perfect, but let's try, you know, let's make mistakes together because mistakes are allowed, you know, kind of making them feel nothing's going to go wrong if we just take one short period of time and try this out, you know, like a sprint. And if it doesn't work out, you know, we can, I mean, to make them more relaxed about it, that's what I'm saying. It's really just managing psychology around it, I think, if that answers your question. I, I, long, I thought that was only the, the, well, the, the challenge with the software developers that I work with, but it's not. It's anywhere where, you, where people are not keen, you know, introducing, being introduced new methods of anything. You know, there's always a little bit of resistance first. But you know, you bring chocolates and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.